So I rewatched El Camino, and it's a pretty good movie. Practical masterpiece, kind of. I call it a practical masterpiece because it's still pretty flawed. Fat Todd is dumb, the movie's pretty slow, the villains are evil Walders, and I can't imagine a single person who hasn't seen Breaking Bad to understand what the fuck is going on. But other than that, it's great. In Breaking Bad, Jesse is this pathetic character. His one defining choice was taking a box he spent so long making and trading it in for fucking weed. And since then, he's been facing the consequences of his choices on his bad choice road. Being controlled and tortured by Walter, Gus, Jane, Hank, Todd, the fucking Aryan Brotherhood, and having any agency taken away from him, and any choices made by himself being ripped away. And at the end, after facing his ultimate torture and penance, being forced to cook meth for the Aryan Brotherhood, Walter finally confronts him, his ultimate controller, and tells him to kill him, and Jesse refuses, making his own choice, and he runs off. We start the movie after all that. Jesse's no longer being controlled, and now it's his time to make things right and get out of his past. The movie is beautifully shot and directed. Gilligan really takes full advantage of movie format, and I really love the ghostly look of Albuquerque compared to how it's filmed in Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. It's very empty and dead, more representing the horrors of Jesse's past and the coldness from the losses after the events of Breaking Bad. I'd also like to add that the movie looks absolutely gorgeous in black and white. I just put black and white filter over some of the images for copyright reasons, and it just looks so good. Vince, please put out a black and white cut. It'd be great. The first scene of the movie is Mike and Jesse talking, Jesse about to make an important choice that'll end up backfiring on him, a scenario Mike is far too familiar seeing happen. He tells him he can never truly make things right, and throughout the movie we see Jesse struggle to do so. He gets Skinny P and Badger's help, and all they are are selfless to Jesse and help him out. Yo, Skinny. Why are you doing all this? Dude, you're my hero and shit. Tries to apologize to his parents, he tries and is constantly reminded of his past and the consequences of his choices. Oh yeah, I haven't even brought up Todd yet. Todd is horrifying. Todd is this dark mirror of Jesse, highlighting the visual motifs and his fake compassion and coldness. He's an emotionless psychopath, controlling Jesse like a dog, and Jesse is filled with nothing but emotion, anger, and sadness. Todd represents the ghost of Jesse's past, something he can kill, but can't kill the memory of. The way this ultimately fits into the American epic that is the Breaking Bad Saga is highlighting choice and redemption how they affect Jesse. The main three themes of the Breaking Bad Saga are choice, change, and redemption. Your choices are your own, and they lead to consequences that will lead to change, and that change can possibly become redemption, but it can only be achieved through your own choice, a choice to be evil or a choice to be good. We see this with Jesse finally given the ability to control his future, and he chooses not to go back into the life of crime, only being forced to for the sake of trying to get out of it. The film very much highlights the western aspect of the saga. Like the Wild West? Yeah. Like the Wild West. Jesse being this flawed, dark gunslinger, like say the High Plains Drifter or Jimmy Ringo, a man stuck with his dark past, but Jesse does persevere through his trauma and pain and uh, also not having enough money, so of course this leads to a Wild West shootout with evil welders, but uh, I digress. After going through his trauma and pain again, he's finally able to get out of Albuquerque and the town of his past. I really love this detail when he shoots one of the welders, how it perfectly reflects him shooting Gale and him instantly being reminded of it. And now that the saga's over, we do know this is the last time you'll ever kill somebody, so this has a bit of extra punch to it. After everything, he moves to the place Mike told him to go to, Alaska, and gives his letter to Brock to the vacuum cleaner repair guy, his last attempt to make things right. And we are given one more final flashback, this one of Jane paralleling both Mike's speech at the beginning of the film and his bad choice road speech in season five of Better Call Saul. Okay. We all make our choices. And those choices, they put us on a road. Sometimes those choices seem small, but they put you on the road. I was thinking about that thing you said about the universe. Going where the universe takes you, right on. I think it's a cool philosophy. I was being metaphorical. It's a terrible philosophy. I've gone where the universe takes me my whole life. It's better to make those decisions for yourself. 
She speaks on how you shouldn't let the universe and other people's choices guide you, but you should have your own choices. Framing choice in a positive sense. The film begins with Jesse driving down the road, but is stopped. In the middle of the film, Todd drives down the road controlling Jesse. And in the last shots of the film, we see Jesse driving down the road with finally nothing to stop him. After all that horror, he now has the freedom to be his own man. I wanted to add this last second. This is how the movie relates to Mike. Mike had watched his son die and lived with that, and then watched a young man he trusted and tried to help, someone who was basically a surrogate son, die in front of him as well, pushing him into his quest for vengeance. And the last man he mentored, Jesse, was able to live. Mike's death wasn't completely in vain. At least one son made it. Jesse made it. What a great movie this is. El Camino. The road, the path, the way. Anyone can see the road